Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Beach Area Commission's uh, monthly meeting, uh, May 21st. Uh, let me introduce the commissioners, uh, but before that, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice for all. Okay, to my far left, we have Dean Merrill, Commissioner at Large, Rich Renier, Rich Renier the uh, Commissioner from the Hampton Beach Village District, John Nyan, representing the town of Hampton, Rick Griffin, representing the town of Hampton. We have Chuck Rage, representing the Hampton Beach Village District, Fran McMahon, representing the Rockingham Planning Commission, Bob Preston, representing the Chamber of Commerce, Mike Hausman, representing Dredd, uh, to my far right, we have Bill Watson representing DOT, and we have Jason uh, from the Planning Department, and we have Ann, our Administrative Assistant. We do not have any appointments tonight, so I'll move right to the uh, review and approval of the minutes of April uh, of our April meeting. And as practice, we will go page by page, and if anybody has any corrections or edits, feel free to speak up. Page one. Page two, page three, page four. I do have one change on page four under the motion that Mr. Griffin made uh, under old business transportation grant. It should really read that Mr. Griffin moved to approve the in-kind contribution report as presented this evening in the amount of $1,664.30 as of April 1st, 2015. And page five. <coughs> Hearing uh, no other additions, recommendations, edits, um, except a motion to uh, accept with the one uh, edit change. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Mr. Griffin made the motion. Do I have a second? <coughs> Mr. Watson, second. Any further discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Passed. Thank Abstain. you. And one abstention. Two abstentions? Two abstentions. Two abstentions. I was in there. And Mr. Housman was in there. So there's three abstentions. Yes, okay. Next on the agenda, um, we uh, want to have public comment. I should have bypassed Mr. Preston for a minute. So public comment, Mr. Preston? Absolutely. I, <coughs> I want to get brief. Uh, I'm not positive, but I think who was at the Dread Spring Operational Meeting, I think the Chairman John was, my brother Bob, Mike. I'm not sure if I left anybody out. It, it seems like we're gaining a little traction, I hope, with respect to the state box plates. People at home not familiar with them, anybody here that's not familiar with them pay $85 and what we've been trying to do is to get that state park plate and veterans plates to be able to park at any metered spot in Hampton basically on school days only so this is a pre and post season we understand the need for revenue which is summer weekends holidays I think uh, I can't speak for uh, Phil Bryce was the other day but I believe he said that the, the dread's going to actively look at it and um, I think this will work, and the sooner the better. And I would like to ask this commission to actively support any way they can, you know, with Dread through Mike or whatever, to get this ball rolling on this and, and try it. Because as we all know, when you go to register your car, you know, it's once a year. And someone's going to have to outlay some money for this. This is $85, and there'll probably be a charge on the plate also. So the sooner we get the ball rolling, the sooner people can go get those plates. And I think that uh, it'll work out good for parks. I think they'll realize a lot more money. And I think the local establishments, whether it's the Ashworth, the, the Boardwalk, or the Sea Catch, or McGurk's, or anybody that's open, will all of a sudden, you know, see a lot more people popping in and out on the weekdays in the spring and fall. So I would appreciate any active solicitation of dread 
to get this get this going. So the sooner we get it going, I had this played for three years. I let it go. I've been working on this for three years, but it seems now we're gaining traction. And I'd like to have to get mine again next February to be able to use it next year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlie. Any comments? Hearing none. We will now move on to the chairman's report, and as you can see, that's probably the first time in the history of the meetings there is nothing under the chairman's report, because I really don't have anything new to report. Uh, some other individuals have updates on different things that we're working on, and the other part will be in either old business or new business. So going right to the treasurer's report, Michael. Yeah, no change in the uh, treasurer's report. The, the balance remains 16499 43 cents in the account. Okay. All right. Do we have a motion to accept the uh, treasurer's report? So, Mr. Merrill made second. a motion, second by Mr. Griffin. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Passed. <coughs> Transportation grant update from DOT, probably the biggest topic for tonight's conversation. Uh, so, Mr. Watson. So I have a few updates for everyone as a handout going along to the, the commission members. Um, we've been working with, we the department have been working with DHB. Uh, they've received comments back from William Rose, the project manager, as well as from the Beach Commission. Uh, and VHD and William are going over all those comments right now. Uh, and we should be in the next month or so seeing some revisions as a result of that. In addition, there's a few things here um, that William put together a short status report for me that I'd like to go over with you all. It, it's somewhat interactive, and, and John, I know we're trying to keep this short, so I will try yeah, to do the best I is, can. This is important, Bill, so take your time. So, when going back to our March meeting, um, Gordon Leedy from BHB talked with us about a number of topics. He talked about social media and uh, media outreach and public meetings and such, and we have been hounding them since then to try and get some uh, dates for meetings together for us. Uh, we had talked about a kickoff meeting somewhere between now and I think it was the second week in June. Uh, and William has been hammering them to try to get us some information. So one of the things that William asked me to bring forward to the commission tonight, uh, VHB has proposed a kickoff meeting in the next week or two, and there are some dates there on the sheet, June 3rd uh, through June 13th, uh, depending on our availability and our uh, preferences. From William's perspective, um, for the amount of work that would have to be done to get the meeting ready for doing a, a, a reasonable amount of outreach. He thinks that Thursday, June 11th makes the best sense for putting a meeting together. And he's asked me to bring that forward to all of us for our consideration uh, the sooner that we can make a decision on whether that works for us um, is it would be a good thing. And also along with that, if that date works for us, um, we're very interested in hearing from the Commission uh, what the best time and location for the meeting might be. I think we had talked, I don't remember this, whether it was here as part of the Commission meeting or separately. Um, there have been discussion in a meeting maybe starting this late, maybe a little too late to start things, but <laughs> something from like a 5.30 or 6 o'clock on for a couple of hours may make sense. But really, that was the first thing that William asked sort of bring forward is, is to get some input from you all as to whether June 11th might be a reasonable date uh, and what we might think about time and location so that VHB can follow up on that further. I don't know if we want to take each item one by one. <coughs> it might be easier. Yeah, it might be easier that way. Um, any, any thoughts, uh, first of all, on the date? And then we can talk about... Uh, place and time, but uh, the date, their recommendation of uh, Thursday, the 11th of June. Works for me. I like it. I'd better yeah. weekend. That's good. Okay. Rick? What time would it be? 
Well, we could talk about that. Yeah. You know, uh, in terms of would be evening. You know, would be evening around this time, maybe oh. starting a little earlier or later, but that would be okay. nighttime versus yeah. daytime. Dean. Okay. Okay. Rich. Okay. All right. So let's uh, first of all then say we'll endorse the date of June eleventh. Um, the location. Uh, my uh, my sense is uh, if we do it around this time, uh, we can check with my my thought process, especially since we would want to do this via TV if we possibly could. Is to uh, first choice would be the police station, um, and then the second choice would be the town hall. But I don't know. Jason, do you know anything on, on the 11th, which is a Thursday night? Is that planning or zoning? Zoning meets Thursday, but they're later in the month. They're, they're later in the month. Yeah. And then planning doesn't meet on Thursdays, no. right? No. So I'm not certain offhand if it's available on Thursday. Okay. How would you have any meetings around? But we're going to be Both locations uh, have the ability to do TV. Um, knowing that this is really trying to draw some people from the beach, my preference would be to keep it on the beach if at all possible in the terms of the location. Um, you know, the third choice would be the dread facility, mm -hmm. but um, we would not have the ability to do TV. Can't do TV at the point of the police commission. Can't? No, why? No. Just tape. But you, you, could, you could tape. So then, like here, if we did it even at the beach, uh, it, the dread facility, that could be taped? Right, you already have equipment here and at the police station. Okay. All right, well. Town Hall would be the number one choice. So what? Town Hall. Town Hall. All right. But I would I would I would go with the police department first to see if the training room is available. Because once again it's it's at the beach. Channel 22 can do it there. The second choice would then be the town hall. And then if both of those, then I'd contact Mike to see what the feasibility of the uh, function room uh, behind the stage. Does that sound all right to everybody that can make it that night? All right? All right, Bill? Is there a better or worse starting time, do you think? I think from what I've what I've heard, they'd be looking to do a five thirty or six o'clock start rather than a seven o'clock. Yeah. I prefer that, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, well, t you're representing though. Tell us what the, you think we could we could get the draw from some of the business owners down on the beach. It's all wet. Well, I know, I know. <laughs> it's a hot mean, day. You're not going to get anybody in. But is it a six o'clock better for most people than a seven o'clock? Probably. Yeah. We do. Bill, how long do you think this first session? Six to eight? Yeah. Okay. So we if we play it up six to eight? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you say the eleven? Yeah. Yes. There's nothing on the fourth or the eleven. It doesn't come out of June. For where? The town hall. The town hall? Okay. okay. All those Thursdays are open so far. Okay. It's a, I thought you said it was a Wednesday. It's a Thursday. Oh, it's a Thursday. It's Thursday. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Before someone else gets. And then six to eight. And then I'll I'll uh, inquire about the three locations. Okay. Okay. Getting the word out. So in terms of getting the word out, um, we've been a, we're a little disappointed. But that we understand it's, it's uh, not as easy to set up a, a shell of a Facebook page or a Twitter page or any of these types of social media accounts without them going live. So uh, what VHDB has done is what you have in the next part of your package are similar social media pages that VHB has set up for projects in the area. Um, if you flip through your packet, the first thing that, that um, 
VHV does is shows us a, a Facebook page they did for a Watertown, Massachusetts comprehensive plan update in 2013. Uh, the look and feel of what they were doing, and a couple of other Facebook pages as well. The look and feel of the page with some of the content and the photographs and the, the items that they use uh, to try to draw attention to it. And then what they identify using the Watertown Facebook page as an example is how they would plug in Hampton Beach, if you flip to the next sheet, how they would plug Hampton Beach and their efforts on the master plan into a page like that. So um, they talk about you know using iconic images from the beach, um, information about the master plan update, what the Facebook page is about, identify all the social media platforms that they're using, uh, try to draw some other photos and maps and images into the uh, into the page. Part of this Facebook page rollout would be uh, the announcement of the, the this first public meeting on June 11th as well. So front and center, it's it's quick, it's interesting, it's inviting to the eye what's going on with the master plan project. They would also um, look to set up a Twitter account. They've got an example of a Twitter page or a Twitter account that was set up for uh, Providence, Rhode Island biking um, effort that the VHB was involved with, and they do the same thing. They kind of mark up how Hampton Beach icons and images and information would fit into that page. They also go as far as recommending some hashtags and different um, items or other Twitter pages that might be worth following, and that would be an important part of, of Twitter or Facebook, is liking the chamber, liking um, DOT, and, and, and making call-outs to those through the through the media efforts so that other organizations that are also using this same type of social media can easily link and share and use the power of the internet and the power of technology to get word out about different events and activities. And again, uh, make a focus of Twitter right up front. All of these things would become live prior to June 11, so that um, we're using these tools to get information out to people. When VHB was here, they spent a little bit of time talking to us about what Mind Mixer was. And they show us a couple of examples printed out um, as to what was done for with Mind Mixer in Boulder, Colorado, and um, a little bit with with Logan Airport <coughs> efforts. And then again, they kind of mark up a little bit of both Mind Mixer pages and indicate how they wouldn't um, update that for Hampton Beach. Um, what we're looking for from or what William and VHB are looking for from the Beach Commission is any comment. Uh, if you look through this and it kind of makes sense to you and you think of images or information or other pages, other organizations that we should be linking to, the sooner that we can know about that, the better. Um, probably it's best, John, to have the commission bring comments through you and to, to William and I so that we can feed that to VHB. The expectation is that all of these sites will be up and running prior to the first public meeting. And as I said earlier, they have a shell of a lot of these pages done, but as soon as they make it live, they want to make sure that it's useful for people because as soon as you make it live out there in the Internet world, someone's going to pick up on it. They don't want to release anything and have it look um, unprofessional or incomplete. And then the last sheet that's in the packet, VHB does have a very basic website up already for this project. Their goal is not to do a lot with the website, actually. The goal is to take the website, leave it pretty basic, put some links, allow people to provide feedback, put some of the documents up there but really push people to the what they consider more productive, proactive, progressive media sites with Twitter, with Facebook, with MindMixer. That's really where the real interaction can happen with people. You know, certainly, Facebook and Twitter give people the opportunity to speak their mind no matter what they want to say, uh, good, bad, or otherwise. Uh, MindMixer will be um, 
monitored to make sure that there's constructive conversation going on about the different meetings for people that are able to attend or not attend or who watch it on, on TV later on and want to offer comments or, or somehow be involved in the project. Um, but as it relates to getting the word out, what we're really looking for from the Beach Commission is comments on some of these mock-ups. We just received it from VHB today. So we haven't spent any more time with it than you have. Um, uh, and if you like the general direction that VHB has kind of mocked this up, then um, we'd like to hear that. So William makes sure that he communicates that appropriately with VHB when they continue this further and get it and go and model for us all. Comments? The only one that I would suggest, and, and I'll entertain comments after people have absorbed it and I'll get it back to you and, and William but one thought is um, the beach right now has um, a couple of websites and a couple of Facebook pages um, that they might want to look at you know even to draw some pictures from you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so um, I will get you those um, I think I can call John Kane, and he can probably give me the best, from a me media perspective, of what sites would be the best to go to, Chuck? Yeah, well, the major, I mean, the, the, the uh, Chamber of Commerce has their own site. The Village District has the official site of Hampton Beach. So those are the two that are uh, for the beach that are not um, public. And then there's HamptonBeach.com, which is uh, a private enterprise. So those are the three main ones that are on the beach. Okay. Question here. Yeah. <coughs> What's the process of gathering the information that will that's going to appear on this website? You know, reviewing it uh, to determine what is actually going to be on that website. Well, that's that's kind of the VH. This is an interactive conversation with VHB. So, so starting off, Rich, I think the first thing that we're looking for is what type they're looking to us to tell them what type of information we feel is important to them. Right now, for the, the beginning of this project, they feel that important information is notice about and publicity about the first public meeting that they're going to have. In addition would be the, the sharing, the publishing of the existing conditions report in draft and final form and, and other information as they gather it that is critical to the, the master plan update. Other activities we have going on, um, you know, one of the, the items I think maybe we'll talk about tonight is the South Beach entryway conversation. Um, maybe it's information. We have a separate project going on at DOT with the Hampton River Bridge that's going to be, you know, the engineering study, the feasibility is going to be starting up in the next year or so. Information like that that we can identify up front that's important is valuable. The website itself is not going to have a lot of, like I said, a lot of information. Facebook is intended to be an interactive conversation with people that are Facebook users that want to talk about and share information. So we may put out um, meeting notices and, and documents and such through Facebook or, or identify them through Twitter. The intention is that it, it becomes an opportunity for conversation and for by other people linking to that those sites, um, spreading quick tidbits, snippets of information out to the public, <coughs> out to whoever wants to consume it that's interested in Hampton Beach. So in, in like, you know, Chuck's recommendations, if, if the chamber in the village district or HamptonBeach.com have their own Twitter feeds or something to link to those so that each time they put out a Twitter feed, the master plan updates pushing that same feed, that, that same tweet out, or vice versa. Um, having them linked so that each time the, there's something going on with the master plan, we're, we're getting some information in for the, from the first meeting. We're getting some thoughts on what the public priorities are, what the business owner priorities are. VHB will tweet that out, will push that out through Facebook, and other people can consume that simply by their, their online relationship to each of these organizations. Um, Mind Mixer is intended to be a place where documents, videos, notes can be kept People can read those at their own leisure, at their own, whenever they want, provide commentary. Um, again, it's a place for, for conversation to happen 
in an online way so that instead of us having a conversation around the table tonight, if people aren't able to get around the table or in a room and talk about it, they still are able to see a lot of online electronic conversations going on and be part of it. Thank you. So they will have the ability to, to have videos on, yes. on this, right? Absolutely. So any meeting that we have that going forward, it would be videoed by VHB? But for meetings such as like the our, our monthly commission meetings no, and like, stuff, like would the be public meeting on the 11th? Yeah. That will yeah. be video. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Just, just one go. Uh, I don't know what the, you know, there's, there's other media out there, you know, there's Pinterest and, and Instagram, and I don't know if that, you know, if there's success on that too, as opposed to Facebook sometimes becoming passe. I think that, um, you know, if, well, I, I guess I would say it this way, Dean, um, these experiences mostly with, Facebook, Twitter, and Mind, Mind Mixer is cutting edge. Uh, so when we look at Instagram or some of those others, Mind Mixer t is in a whole new direction that I think it will will surprise a lot of people. The bottom line is, if we're not getting to the number of people, if we're not seeing the number of likes, if we're not seeing the number of people or organizations associated with the Twitter page or Facebook page as they would expect, as compared to other projects they've been involved in, they could change it up. Yes. Comments. Okay, so I, based then on, a, on that bill, I believe you, you have our endorsement to let them know that we, uh, we agree on the general direction as online. And then if there are any comments on any of this, I'll get them back to you and uh, William. Good. The other half of getting the word out is, you know, in addition to a social media presence, how, do, how else do we make sure that people are aware that this this kickoff meeting is going to happen and then subsequent meetings after that? So what William and VHB have done is tried to outline a, a few steps, uh, focusing on them first, you know, assuming that we can make June 11th work, the way William built this out. Um, we feel that a, a print and a broadcast um, method, in addition to social media, is the, the most direct and going to be the most positive way to generate interest and get people out um, to the June 11th meeting. So, with that in mind, Williams already put VHB on notice, assuming that you all said okay with June 11th, that by next Friday, the 29th, um, the website, Facebook, Twitter, MindMixer are all up in line. That's, and at the same time, uh, working with us, working with VHB, uh, we will have uh, media talking points um, not only developed but distributed to all of us. So that if, if we want to have a formal press release, we want to try to reach out to Channel 9 or other uh, media sources, we want to be reaching out to our own, the Board of Selectmen, the Village District, the, the Chamber, others. We have some consistent talking points that we can all be working from so that we're all making sure that uh, as we're talking to those that we work with, those groups that we're familiar with, we're all kind of setting the same expectation for what, what this June 11th meeting could be. And then um, after that, it's, it's pound in the streets by all the methods that we have between uh, you know, next Friday the 29th and the June 11th meeting to, to make sure all the organizations that we want, all the individuals that we want are aware of this first public meeting and that they're invited to come and listen, come and get a, a background as to what the project is about, hear about the existing conditions, and then for us to shut up and listen to what people have to say. Bill, the plan of the 29th of the formal press release uh, issued. It's, it's the word issued, meaning that it will be sent out at that date. It's yes. not expected to be in the press that day. Right? We, we would plan it so that it's um, in the press that weekend. So it's Friday the 29th, um, May 31st papers if you're looking at Sunday paper yeah. announcement. If we need to make that a day or two earlier or later because of different print schedules, that's fine. We can, we can work with that. Okay. Because a lot of, a lot of times the uh, 
the uh, Seacoast paper on Sundays with the Hampton related story. They will they will add that story to what the Tuesday Hampton Union, so that it would be in in the in the basic Seacoast paper Sunday, and then uh, the same story article would be in Hampton Union that Tuesday. So what I will make sure that William and VHB are aware of is that they, you know, if that's one of the, the the outlets to target, that they work with Seacoast to ensure that they they have a press release to them in time that. Uh, Know, if it's just a, a basic story that they have the information necessary and they can reach out early enough that if they want to interview any of the beach commission members or, or others to to build upon that press release, they have the opportunity to do that before that Sunday. Okay. The only other thing that I would ask also for that press release is that uh, if they can give me a draft of where they're going to send uh, we might be able to add a couple of other um, um, organizations to, to send it to. Anybody else have any comments about the, uh, the strategy around uh, the media? And or is there anyone interested as part of the press releases to be front and center in front of a camera or in front of a microphone for, for sound bites and conversation. I know you always are, John. Well, I, I, I think, we, I, I think <laughs> we get Mr. Preston involved yeah. and Mr. Rage involved. Two uh, beach people. And, and Preston never gives up an opportunity where he can wear his uh, Preston Real Estate red jacket. Of course. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Any other comments? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay, great. The, uh, don't go away. The existing conditions memo. Um, first of all, thank you all for uh, taking time to uh, review it. Um, I do have, um, and I'll start with Mr. Merrill, uh, <coughs> once again, keeping in, in mind that we have to track our time for in kind, I've created uh, a document that covers our April and May meetings, the amount of time that we've spent, um, basically projecting the time that we were going to spend tonight, um, and then also the time that I projected that each one of us spent in reviewing the existing conditions report. So um, if you can, just next to your name, just put your initials. And then um, we can have this recorded as in kind. You will notice some of them that weren't in the April meeting, so uh, I reduced the time that you had. Um, while that's going around, though, one of the, the things that I just want to make sure that everybody is on the same page, um, and, and that is because I saw when uh, William talked to our BHB in March, there was a little bit of hesitancy in terms of what we're defining as our um, property lines, if you will. Um, and where I was saying the master plan does go up to the uh, high street uh, area uh, that would then include the whole North Beach area, Kings Highway, etc. It appeared at that point that that was kind of a surprise and that William indicated that he would address that with BHB. Um, in the existing conditions report, um, I also wanted, once again, to make sure that um, that area, you know, from Boar's Head all the way up to North Beach, up to High Street, and including Kings Highway, is covered. So um, that's why I stressed it in the uh, in our, our report. Um, so just want to make sure that um, that word is, is passed back. That point has been made clear, very clear to VHB. And there's a couple of approaches, a couple of responses, I guess. Um, the first is the, the scope of work, and I don't have any of the task in front of me. So the budget that we developed with VHD does not include an in-depth review 
of the area that you're talking about, John, the ex what I would call the extended area. Their focus was more from the, the bridge to the 101 interchange, a little bit north maybe. So there's two approaches. One, they can collect some of the necessary information but not do a full-blown plan update for the larger scale. And we can negotiate with them a, a reasonable amount of data to collect for, for no additional cost or resources needed, which leaves a lot of additional funding of the 300000 to receive for more design and implementation work. Or we can go back and tell them, no, nope, we want you to do um, a lot more in-depth data collection, review, design, and update for that larger corridor that will cost us more. And, and so William right now is at a point where he feels that VHV is willing to do some more um, basic analysis, basic work for the extended area without an additional cost, but it's not going to be the same level of detail and effort that they're focusing on. Um, as they had planned for the, the bridge to the 101 area. Well, then, then my concern would be, to, without knowing what that additional definition is, without going into a, a, a task order change, um, in terms of what that would be. I mean, I, I think where we would be missing a very important component of the, the master plan if we excluded uh, parts of the master plan that reference the North Beach, and reference uh, that area, and we don't include it in our revised master plan. So my, my sense is that I would like to see from William what their definition is of a, an extended study and then, depending on what that is, and I'll share that with the commissioners to get their input, um, but if we're not satisfied with that, then what we would want is to see what the change order would cost us to have, as you call, the in-depth component and have it fully extended to that area. Okay? Any comments from anybody on that subject? Okay. All right, Bill. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate your uh, wearing two hats. <coughs> Next is we have uh, Mike. Yep. We had a great meeting, so yeah. take it away. I'll start there. Yeah, so Saturday, this past Saturday, we had our uh, staff uh, meeting with the Hampton community. Had a pretty good turnout, um, you know, and had some discussions for a couple hours yep. you know we had some good takeaways from it we thought and uh, some stuff you know some good back and forth with people and uh, yeah uh, we thought it was good you know John thank you for uh, hosting I know Bob was there you guys I don't know what your thoughts are but yeah we thought it was productive and you know Brian we thought Brian did a good job uh, him and his staff and getting some information out there and we will have a uh, there was one question uh, we will come back in the fall and have another meeting, kind of update things that happened this summer, and uh, things we want to look forward to uh, going forward. So, yeah, we thought that was productive, you guys. I thought the best takeaway was that everybody working together. Mm -hmm. You know, we're uh, Brian's getting a handle on it now. This will be a full whole season for him, so he's starting to understand who he's working with down here. Um, police chief was there. Richie was down to and oversee, and, and he wants to work together with the businesses. Yeah, that was a plus that he was there, yeah. It really was, yeah. yeah. So I, I thought all in all it was good. We get some discussion done and see if we can uh, figure some things out. Yeah, yeah, we got some, you know, some things that came out of that that we can uh, look at and do. And, uh, so, yeah, like you said, Brian, you know, Brian's got a year under his belt now. Um, they're ready. Our staffs, you know, we're anxious after a long winter. They're anxious to get going here um, this weekend. You know, things will be... You know, things have been going on camping and the meters, and but we'll be fully operational starting this weekend. Um, the beach raking operations have started um, this past week, so yeah, we're, we're excited. Uh, so there's some new staff. Some you know, we've had the ability to hire some new full-time staff down here that focuses on maintenance, 
um, that aspect of it. So that's a plus for us going into this year. Um, so yeah, um, we're excited about it. So you know, again, it was a long winter, and I you know I wasn't here in April, but uh, you know did want to thank again DOT, Bill, your guys. Uh, we had some snow removal. Uh, you know, spring was starting to hit here, and uh, DOT really rallied with a lot of folks and uh, got a lot of snow moved one one day down here that helped us help the town. So that was you know that was huge. And then also Rick thanking the town. Uh, you know Brian's got a real good working relationship I think with the Public Works uh, down here, and they came in and you know as you guys knew all that that's the snow pile that was down in South Beach. Um, you know, the town came in towards, you know, the beginning of this month to help, you know, move some snow around, uh, you know, got the trash out of there, and it really helped expedite the uh, the melting of the snow. I know, which, you know, a lot of people had later than that in the pool when the snow was going to be gone, and I think May 12th was the uh, last day for the snow in there, but it did help. It, the, the town got in there and moved it around, and, you know, that helped it melt quicker. So, you know, that was, it didn't, you know, we... We weren't sure what to expect with that amount of snow that was in there. What problems might have come from that? But really, uh, you know, really, we didn't see any. Really, really, nothing really came of it. So, uh, so that was good. So, yeah, the town, so town had some money in that pool, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that was good. You know, it's good to see. You know, folks, the, the guys, are, as Bob said, you know, pe people are working together um, and getting things done. So it's, it's good to see. I think one of the one of the things that I got from the meeting was, uh, once again, the spirit of cooperation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we had Selectman uh, Woosley there, and uh, she uh, offered some some good comments, uh, some uh, concerns of hers, which I believe either you're addressing or will be addressing. Mm -hmm. uh, that includes the jetty and always the whole issue of the trash, right. and et cetera, et cetera. Right. But I, I think overall it went really well. Um, I'm excited about uh, Chris Jacobs. I, I, I see him playing a very proactive role in, in wanting to work, getting things done. Um, it was great for the chief to be there because um, I think he has a lot to add when it comes to uh, public safety in the beach. Um, but the other thing, too, I, I, I think was important is that a lot of sharing of information from your end uh, that some people just didn't even realize or didn't know. I mean, uh, for example, you know, the seawall, that we've all been watching the reconstruction of the North Beach seawall. It's actually going to get done, mm -hmm. and it's going to be finished by June 15th. Yeah. And I mean, that's a, a major multi-year program that finally got it done, and it's, it's, it's there. Mm -hmm. So um, good job, Mike, and uh, just feel free to pass our, our positive comments back to, uh, to Phil and others on your you. team. Yeah. Okay. Next, uh, under old business, uh, you all saw that I sent out an email, copied you all on it. Some of you uh, somewhat received it in the two column and then also in the CC column. Uh, and that is uh, this uh, picnic that uh, Mr. Preston and Preston Real Estate has offered to co-host uh, for us to all get together um, on site down at the uh, South Beach area to really take a look at what things we could do to help improve the look and feel of that area, and especially for those that are coming across the bridge and entering into uh, Hampton, maybe even for the first time. Um, I did send out um, to a number of organizations uh, that I thought would be important to uh, show representation. Um, I hope I didn't forget anybody. Feel free, uh, gentlemen. If, if you think I need to include somebody else, let me know, because I know that the, uh, the food budget for Preston Real Estate will uh, have an impact on that. Um, but uh, so you far... Got everybody drunk. You got, there's enough people there. You got, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's got to be a couple hundred people. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I have already heard back from a, a good number of people, um, and it looks like we're going to be doing it on June 4th. Uh, at noontime. June 4th. Um, so um, what we'll probably do is meet for lunch. Uh, Mike, if it's all right with you, we'd like to use the picnic tables in the state park. The state park there. Um, and have maybe lunch there with a kind of a, a small agenda. 
uh, and then kind of have a walk over to the uh, the site itself, and then maybe come back with uh, what people, you know, recommendations, and thoughts, and ideas would be. So if we could use that that uh, area. Yeah, I'll double off. check just to make sure nothing's in there. I, I don't imagine at noontime on on a Thursday, but okay, I'll let you know tomorrow. Great. All right, and if, once again, if anybody uh, yeah. thinks I'm missing any organization, feel free to let me know, and I'll, I'll go ahead and in, invite them. Um, other old business, Chuck, you had uh, an update on the uh, Wi-Fi situation. Yes, I talked to a gentleman, Eli Morse. He's actually a, a Hampton Beach resident, I guess. Do you know him, Bob? No. He, I think that he, um, he is from Morse Technologies. And he, his, he has a division called Sigma Wi-Fi. And um, there's a way that we might be able to get this, the whole beach set up with Wi-Fi if we can get everybody working together um, before this year, before the start of, before July. So um, I'd like to set up an appointment to meet with him and go over things. Uh, and I don't know who else would anybody here would like to join me to go over it, um, that we can maybe make some decisions they could bring the beach in at low cost and um, with a user fee of someone streaming videos or something, but maybe give them free Wi-Fi for, for basic, but then charge them for add-ons and stuff like that. And uh, anytime someone logs into the, uh, the Wi-Fi, it could be sent to the Chamber of Commerce or the Village District website or, or, or photos of the beach and, and help promote uh, different businesses at the beach. So um, it's preliminary now, but he'd like to sit down with a couple people and go over everything. So I could set up that meeting, and if anybody wants to be in, involved with it, that would be great. Uh, just let me know. I think that would be something that, uh, Mike, would you agree that maybe Brian be involved in from, yeah. from Dread? Yep, I do. And then maybe Doc? In the chamber, Chuck. Chuck, good work. Uh, put me on the board. D. That would be great. Bob, you want to do that too? Sure. Okay. <coughs> okay. okay. Any comments, thoughts about that? Hearing none, we'll go into uh, new business. And uh, before I go into my two uh, bits, Jason, you had some. Uh, Something you'd like to share with the commission? Sure. So last week, um, myself, Brian, Diane, our conservation coordinator, and the, um, Jamie from the town manager's office, Jamie Sullivan, um, had met with the uh, village district regarding a community rating system um, and a grant that we're pursuing associated with getting into the CRS program. Um, CRS um, is a program associated with the National Flood Insurance Program that allows, dis provides opportunities for discount rates to residents on their premiums, on their flood insurance premiums. Um, it's a, as in the brochure here, it is a uh, class sy classification system. People who aren't, or communities who aren't in the program right now start at class 10. Um, if you meet six criteria, you get into a class 9, um, which starts with a uh, you know, per policy $43 uh, discount according to their website and per community average of $75,649. So, and then it steps up from there. Um, what we're trying to do initially is get into this program. It's a very complicated uh, task to actually get in. We're going to be working with the Rocking and Planning Commission. They've at least expressed interest in working with us on getting into this program. Um, we were notified of a request for proposals um, from the, I hope I say this, the Pitiscaqua Region um, Estuaries Partnership, the PREP, um, and one of the items that they have for their grants that they're offering is ex assessing eligibility and applying for the National Flood Insurance Program Community Rating System, up to uh, $20,000. Um, the anticipated cost of the project is $20,000. Um, the funds we would get out of the grant if we were awarded that grant would be $10,000 in that case. 
there's an in-kind match of 7,500, which would be done by staff log hours between myself and Rayanne predominantly. Um, there is a 25% <coughs> federal uh, match requirement in cash. Um, the village district had graciously offered uh, half of that. Um, and I just wanted to put that out to this commission tonight to see if it was anything they would be interested in participating in at all or or not. But just to, to at least to uh, put it out there for your information about the program and the grant we're pursuing in general and if it is something that, that the commission was interested in participating in. So, so this, who's, who's the final impact to to this? Who, 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 who's this going to reach out to? A okay. business owner or a resident? Or? Well, it would, it would help all residents of the community because what happens is the community gets into the, the CRS program uh, through this. Um, well, the grant you know, helps us to apply. It's a very complex process. There's a lot involved in that. So it's something that you know two or three of us in town can't necessarily do on our own. So we have the RPC who would assist with that. Um, from there, if we get you know if we get into the program and we, we would start at credit uh, step nine, which is what most communities are, it's, it's really gets challenging and very tedious after that to get beyond that. But I'm sure we could ultimately. But it certainly would start at credit step nine, and that's where the discounts start to trickle down into all the uh, residents who have flood insurance, basically. So they would get discounts on their premiums um, through that, as, as the chart that I have in that sheet shows for the class nine per policy average of $43 savings that each resident would, would gain from that, from the community, from Town of Hampton being in that program. Okay. Dean? You're already doing some. I mean, the town's already doing some of these things. That oh, absolutely. And we've, and, and he we've, talked about yeah. he talks about you know morning response, and I can think of all the work that uh, uh, both of these have already done. And you, can, you can check a lot of these things off. Exactly right, and, and we and that's why it's so important that we actually apply. I, we ran, and I have gone right. through a number of these prerequisites for the class nine. I think this would be easy. To I mean, we're we're, we're sure we need five of the six already, essentially. Yep. At least five of the six. So any discount, no matter what it is, is it makes yeah. sense. The uh, your intent tonight, Jason, I'll put you on the spot. Your yep. intent tonight, um, knowing the, uh, the fast track that you have to go into getting an application in by uh, June fifth. Yes. Since yeah, there, it's being worked on right now. Um, I think we're anticipating, my understanding is we would go before the Board of Selectmen for approval to pursue this grant on June 1st. That's my understanding. That we're looking to do that. But it's all, but the application is already well in progress because of, the, obviously, the time constraints that we're under. Um, so I, I think, time-wise, I think we'll be fine on that. But And you said the Village District has already come up with 1250 they, They've agreed to, uh, to provide 1250 of that should we be awarded that. So, so the other 1250 were, you know, were to be determined essentially. You get any, is, is there a line item um, from the town that maybe not for the full 1250, but if say if the beach commission uh, paid half of the 1250 in the town, so it shows that the village district, the beach commission, and, and the town that's, all contributed. That's very possible, and I mean that's that's something certainly we would present to the board of selectmen when we met with them, and, and I. I I would hope that we would have, I would think we have their support behind that. This is good. What do people feel about, uh, we do have some money, as we know, in the budget. Uh, we have been using it very conservatively. This might be something um, that we might want to apply it to. And, you know, if, if we don't get the grant, the money goes back into our, our you know, freshman's report. But uh, <coughs> if we... Uh, Showed a combination of the village district, the beach commission, and the town. I, I think, I think that personally, I think that sounds great. Okay. Um, you know, and I would say if you if you did vote on doing that, you know, I would just say contingent upon the board of selectmen approval of our, us pursuing this this application. Okay. You want to make that motion? Yes. I'll make that motion that the town split it with the the beach commission. Beach commission. The the 1250. The 1250 remaining. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a second to that motion? Mr. Preston, second. Any further discussion? I'm just a little, I'm a little concerned that the uh, village district motion was we would pay half, the town paid half. I don't know if we would have to write to another motion. Uh, 
that would affect it. Because that was it was stipulated that we would definitely we would pay half of the town paid half. So I don't know if that would if we would have to do another motion. Would that mess up your deadlines or anything? Um well, it is a, it is a tight deadline right now. Yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't considering that fact then. That, no, that was the motion that was made and voted on. Was that voted via the commissioners? That, that the was three commissioners at that, that last meeting. Do you have such things as electronic voting? No. I don't see how it would be a problem because we offered to pay half if the other half was paid. So. Um, the contention was it's not just a, it's a town issue as well as a beach issue. That's right. And that was one of the things because it's not just... People yeah. don't just have flood insurance on in the village district. They have flood insurance in the whole town. Um, I don't see it being an issue. I'd say we could vote on it at our next meeting. So uh, I just don't know if you need the money now or does the money come oh, no. later? No, so, I, I would think it would come later. I think we would need. I'm looking here. I think we would need a letter, a letter of match commitment. You know, to provide a letter committing to providing such match. We wouldn't need the money in hand. No, just a letter. So I'd say we we'll just bring it up at the next meeting. I don't think it'd be an issue. Could our, um, could, our, could our motion be revised so that our proposed contribution is to the town for their half share to the, the application? The, the end result is it's the same, it's yeah. the same, but the money is going through rather than going from the Beach Commission directly to the, to the application. It's fine with me. I, I don't, I, I, we have a lot of people in town that are very persnickety about wording, so uh, if that's the way to do it, <coughs> then that's fine with me. Rick, with that? It sounds to you? fine to me. Okay. All right. So here. Oh. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so we have a motion as amended from Bill Watson. Bob, you're okay with that as yep. a second? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? I'll fill in Ann in a minute. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. All right, Jason. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And um, if you want to also draft. Um, some wording in a letter that I'm sure that the Beach Commission I'll, uh, I'll sign on behalf of the Beach Commission. Okay, absolutely. Uh, as a letter of support. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Good luck. I'm thinking sevens and sixes you need to go for. Them, aren't yeah. All the time. <laughs> 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 All right, um, and I'll fill you in on a motion okay. that was just approved. And oh. you okay? Yeah. Okay. Did you change that motion? Yes, we amended it. So I'll check. I'll share with you in a minute. Okay. Um, summer schedule, like always, um, we won't have any uh, posted monthly meetings, but as you can see already, we have some meetings in June, and I suspect that we'll have some further meetings uh, of different groups within the Beach Commission during the summer. Um, so I will keep all posted. Uh, if something does come up that requires a, a full Commission meeting requiring a vote. I will send out a, uh, an emergency uh, meeting notice. Um, so that's one thing. Um, the second is just to let you all know that come this fall, we will have three individuals that their appointments uh, are up. Um, myself, the town of Hampton, uh, Dean Merrill, the citizen at large, and Rich Renier, the Hampton Beach Village District. So those will be uh, addressed uh, in uh, September, October timeline uh, for those uh, appointments to, uh, to be dealt with. And finally, I have um, the uh, meeting dates for this coming year, 2015, 2016. Um, so that everybody can Put your, uh, the dates in your calendar going all the way to May 19th, 2016. <coughs> and uh, Ann, I would ask you um, at the end of May to post this like you did um, yes. so that we have all of the meetings posted for next year. Okay. And I'm also going to get full Okay. Yeah, we're going to have that one for you. Okay. Any other new business? Hearing none, I'll uh, accept a, uh, a motion to adjourn at 8 o'clock. Nice. Motion made by Mr. Powell, second by Mr. Griffin. All in favor? Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Channel 22, thank you. Thank you.